Perforce is the fucking man. He looks like a cross between a Power Ranger villain and something out of a Mega Man game. He looks like Uncle Fiddle from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but in full power armor, ready to school some fools at pool. And by pool, I mean a four player ADH game. No holds barred. <laughs> Jeffrey? Break out, Lucille. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I'm the Magic the Gathering content creating equivalent of that vegan soy boy socialist that Alec Jones keeps warning you about. Ho ho ho, teeny Jedi. Be careful or I'll steal your girl and shit in your shoes. This deck is only 80 bucks online, but a cool $1,000 in paper. God bless that fucking reserve list, eh? The plan is to play Big Daddy P and then make tokens through Norin, Krenko, Mere Chamber, all of the competitive modern all-stars that you come to expect from a deck on my channel. All with the intent of eking out value where Mono Red has no business in having it, and triggering Perforce more than the men's rights activist on International Women's Day. The beautiful thing about this deck is the fact that it provides so much value. Or value, as the case may be, compared to what a red deck should be doing. On the value scale here, where healing salvers are 1 and casting scale shift with Tachi over and players in 11, red usually ranks around a 2 at the very best. But when you start to move away from lava spikes and ball lightnings and get into the realms of Krenko and Kiki Jiki, well, oh boy, the value train is here, all aboard, next stop, death to all who oppose our father. Our father, who art in the mountain, triggered be thy name. As always kids, this video is brought to you by the kind patrons of those that support me over on Patreon. The channel continues to grow and we are fast approaching the 20k mark. If you want to get involved with the weekly Brewmaster challenges, get involved with the splicer calls, or just chat shit about a giant hentai over on the Discord, you can do so by becoming a patron today. Follow the link in the description below, give me some money and help me make this a full time vocation where I can make more and more content so you guys can laugh at how shit I am at magic. And again, a huge thank you as always to MTGO Traders and Kate Fear Games as they're continued love and support they sponsor the channel to allow me to keep devoting so much time to this if you use the discount code on screen now on either site would that be traders for mtgo cards or kate fair games for the physical cards it helps to support the channel directly Okay, so this game starts off very weirdly indeed. I have a solid opener with three lands, a goblin matron, and a soul ring. I was also recording the wrong fucking monitor at first, so I lost the first 60 seconds or so of the game uh, before I realised and restarted my recording software. I then tried it the first minute or so via the replay feature, but as usual, Magic the Gathering Online proved to be a bit shit. The host, this gentleman here, an obvious Elder Scrolls fan, Daedra Khajiit, explains that he's new to the game and just can't get his mana correct in his decks. He mulligans the five and then just fucking restarts the game. I didn't even know this was an option to be honest as a host of an EDH game but here we are. I'm given two garbage sevens and then end up mulligan to six myself. I'm a little bit tilted here as he is much happier now he has a strong seven with little regard or even discussion with the table around him as to whether he should restart. I mean the common courtesy would have been just to ask people if they were cool with it. He leads land into soul ring into lightning grieve so I'm not fucking surprised he was much happier with this opener. I ask him if he's happy now that my hand is rather garbage and the other players chime in and also observe that their hands are considerably worse. I am happy you are getting salty, he states. I ask him to say hello to YouTube. You see, this is the kind of thing in Paper Magic where I'd happily prefer a player at the table go back up to a 6 or a 7, it's so we can have a proper game as opposed to someone being just new from the outset and not getting into the game. However, I can't help but question this is a regular occurrence with this gentleman resetting his host games online every time he doesn't get the opener that he wants. There's a bit of a social contract when you enter an EDH game. Leaving early is bad enough and something I feel guilty for when I have to do it, but this nonsense is just fucking odd. Don't do this. Don't. Be. That. Guy. With all that said, my opener is fine as long as I draw a mana rock or a fourth land. I've written that Freya leads to the mountain here in my script, but I'm pretty sure she led with the forest. Yeah, she definitely led with the forest. I lead mountain, Endrixar plays a swamp, Arabo plays a second forest and nothing more, so it actually looks like his hand isn't going to develop you all that good. Freya Lease, a Carly Heart Garden, Rampy Rampy Pants over here. What a surprise from the mono green deck. We draw a mana vault but don't want to use it just yet. I play a mere chamber and pass the turn. Nothing from these two, the Sylvan Library from Fairlease, she begins to look the most threatening at the table. This ruination in my hand looks to be a dead card now, and probably be fodder for my trading posts in a bit. We cast a charge off of the vault, opt to use her pseudo card draw and exile a Panharnomicon, which makes me feel so unbelievably sad. The sadness is on the stack, the ultra value is gone forever. Like this video if you cry every time.
We have a Yahini from Endric, who I have found to be a card that gets completely out of hand in EDH. It also has haste, which makes it perfect for hitting my Chandra down to three. This cat that makes rats is also perfect for hitting Chandra as well, as it can haste in with Greaves and then give the Freya Least player some gas to finish her off. There was much to it here, as I thought playing a walk onto an empty board would put me into a strong position, of course, but. I'm never lucky. Then my opponent misclicks and skips his combat. Never didn't have it. Never didn't have it. Rewarded. Bring Elise playing explosive vegetables, triggers a garden twice, and sacrifices to ramp herself even further. And that's quite a weird sentence I just said. That is a lot of fucking mana. And he doesn't attack Chandra, so in the words of Charlie Sheen, with an old meme. Winning. We make mana for Chandra, cast Perforos, and then cast this freshly drawn Norin, which is easily one of the best draws I could have drawn here. The engine is now online. I actually missequenced this a little bit. If I had cast Norin first, I mean I would have had one more mirror at the end of this turn. Learn to play Scrub. Yahini attacks me, triggering Norin. I block with a mirror. Norin comes back at end of turn, and I dome everyone for four. That's right, guys. Perforos hits all players. He's an equal opportunity malevolent deity bringing the pain. Everyone's favourite Mr. Rossetti over here plays a Karoo bouncing a land back to his hand. A quick editor's note when I was editing the video. Actually, I'm more the Mr. Rossetti character here because I'm the one being begrudging of the resetting. Mr. Rossetti infamously scolds players for resetting their console without saving properly in Animal Crossing. So that would make me Mr. Rossetti to explain the joke. Um, yeah, I just want to point that out before the comment section. There's some Animal Crossing fans out there that are probably... Get really angry at me. Uh, moving on. Suddenly this ruination seems like a solidly spiteful saffron olive style insult. I have to cast it. I need to cast it. I am a man possessed. The cat and the mayor come at Chandra. Noren runs away. The fearful young man like he is. I block the biggest damage. Chandra lives to uptick another day. Everyone takes four on the end step again. Pew, pew. He gives another rat to Freyalise because the table fucking hates me. Freyalise plays a Selvala and an OG Nissa. Her board set is actually a real threat and I'm not too happy about this. Rats swing, Norin cowers in fear and Norin comes back to dome everyone for four again. Freyalise is now on 14 life and the other two at 22 life. Perforos, Norin and Mere Chamber are doing quite literally God of the Forge's work. I draw a Mind Stone, I find a Zealous Construct that I cannot cast with Chandra's Dark Tricks, so just dome everyone for two instead. I cast Ruination, and whilst it only kills one land, I feel that it was well and truly worth it. How would you like your resets now? Norn goes to the shops and comes back with a friend, taking Freya Lise to eight. At this point in time, an attack or spell cast by the other two will result in the death of Freya Lise. Endric casts Gilded Lotus, sealing Freya Lise's fate and taking her to four. What a bastard! Why would you do that to somebody? Captain Cat decides to call it a day and concedes out of the game. GG, may your resets be more profitable in future. Glissa kills Mere Chamber, which is more than fair enough. It's done its work for him. He casts a Vigor, which he probably shouldn't cast before, so we got the extra Mere, but whatever, and swings. I accidentally double block a rat instead of blocking in a way that lets Chandra survive. This confuses me to no end why I can't figure out what I actually did. I basically just misclicked. And I asked them if they know what happens. Um, one of my opponents points out what happened there. I guess I found it hard to believe that I am perhaps that much of an idiot. Disclaimer, I really am an idiot. Chandra is dead, I hope this doesn't cost me the game. The attack causes Norin to go in and out and put our friend here to two. I cast a trading post, Norin runs away, which means this lights out for Fryalise and the scary looking ball stay on end step. And then, there were two. The Shahini's probably going to be an issue, but I'm feeling confident. Smothering Abomination into Gary means he is now on 13, which is considerably higher than 8 when dealing in Perforos triggers. He attacks, we block with Mir, Norin comes back from the shops with the Cornetto, and we pay a life for a goat, which triggers Perforos. Pew! We draw a mountain, which feels bad, and I wish we could have some virtual card advantage off of Chandra here, but of course she died. I guess she wasn't really meant to be alive, in fact, that cat hadn't missed its combat attack step, so maybe I can't complain. We sacrifice the mana that has been pinging us to the trading post and draw Chandra's mother. Did you know that when you compare Pia to Pia and Kirin, the two different cards, the only real difference is the extra Thopter added to Pia and Kirin? Now, this basically confirms that Chandra's father is a Thopter. Chandra is actually half attack helicopter. I bet that'll drive some people in the community fucking nuts. Damn those social justice lizards at Wizards of the Coast putting attack helicopter people in my card game. Peter triggers Perforos twice and we are closer to once again killing him. We can even block the Amandal off his land here if he goes for that and sack the copter to avoid the 9 point life gain from him if we need to. Basically we're looking to dodge Wraths here mainly. No damnation one time. Noren arrives in end step and he goes to 3. Smothering Abomination sacrifices Gary and he plays something far worse than a 
simple raft. A one-sided raft on a large flying body that can reanimate Grey Merchants of Asphodel. Fuck my life. He gains a literal bucket load of energy, reanimates Gary and chunks me to 11, and he is now 11-2. That's two 11s, that's quite, quite coincidental. And then Nine's like, no, fuck that, comes back and takes him to nine. We draw a very bad top deck. We sack the Mind Stone and draw another pretty weak top deck. We sack Trading Post to itself and find a Blasphemous Act. I know it won't kill Yahini here, but it will kill the rest of his board. We cast it, and then I realise that, well, he now has Lethal on board and I have no blockers. Okay, GG Yahini. One more time, guys, one more time. Let's give it another shot. Our opener is fine, one mana source, and we might be off for the races. Lands from everyone. I'm hoping a lot of non-basic show up so I can simply just get them with Magus of the Moon. This deck isn't here to make any friends, guys. Mogus is probably the most metal-looking god with Perforce in second place. I mean, this could be a wicked-looking band with Mogus on lead guitar and Perforce on vocals or drums. Two non-basics, but Mulch finds basics and Magus now feels a bit... Meh. We draw a hanger back and play it on one. Signet from Mogus and a wandering wolf from this dude. I think this might be wolf tribal and I'm impressed if it is. That is some true conviction right there. Grizzly Salvage comes to fill Merrin's bin and we get to attack for one. Aggressive. I accidentally went to combat this one actually without meaning to so I second main phase the Raven Master. Leaking a little bit of value there but not getting the 1-1. One, one. But perhaps my opponent thinks I'm just being friendly and kind and not too aggressive and little do they know I'm just a clumsy man with the motor skills of discard Kinder Egg Rapper. Mogus has arrived and he's shooting bitches all over the shop. In upkeep he shoots everyone for two unless they sack a dude, so everyone just takes two. Wolfblood takes two and casts Kadama's Creepy Reach. Look at those creepy fingers. Merrin is here for the party too, so it's only correct that I play Mountain Man. Trigger, Rabble Man, shoot everyone, go to combat, smash Mogus's tits in. <gasps> then he plays his very own Perforce, looks like he's forming a band, encroaching on my turf and getting all up on my grill. Silver for a Parzan comes down on theme, I respect that. I have a theme of my own though. It's pain. We get hit, which makes sense. Marion plays a couple of tribal elders that play well into our game power of sacrificing shit. We to draw the land we need for Kiki Jiki. That's number one. Oh boy, this is gonna be good. We cast Kiki and copy the Rabble Master, which is two triggers and four damage. We then move the combat trigger in both Rabbles and do a further four damage to everyone at the table. Perf is now online, so he gets into the ring. We slam a load of stuff into Wolfie Boy and Godband over there. They both take it, which is pretty metal. God boy consuming vapors means so I sacrifice a 1 1 and he gains one life. Seems like a very solid use of 4 mana. Wolfblood copies my Nykthos and gets into the red zone. Marin sacrifices the secure speed bump in the end step of Wolfboy's turn to maximize available mana and plays a smothering abomination and a Psylock artifact destroyer. We untap and draw insurrection. I do some maths and I think I can't cast it. I copy Ramble, then activate Nykthos and realize that actually I can cast it, so I cast it. It also untaps Kiki Cheeky that I hadn't realized would happen, so my penis becomes instantly erect. Blood rushes to the end of my engorged cock. I have had a few comments recently saying that all I do is make lewd sex jokes in place of actually being funny. As a response to that, I do ask my critics to lovingly suck upon my anus whilst I defecate into your shoe. I copy another Rabble Master. I go to combat and dish out a load of creatures to everyone's faces to kill them. I consider sending just one 2-2 two -two wolf at Wolfie Man, but I fear a random plowshare's path to condemn, so I decide to do the next best thing in terms of irony to send all wolves at his face. Wolfie Man says GG, which prompts Merrin to actually scoop it up, and then he casts Moon Mist, which forks all non-wolf damage, which means Merrin would have survived, that's pretty funny. Wolf Tribal dies in a blaze of wolf and glory, and Mogus lives to spell another turn. Vapors rebounds, I sack a gobble and he gains one life. He casts Tainted Remedy and then passes the turn. I untap, make a second ramble, decide to go for maximum triggers, activate Nykthos again, casting a Matron, getting a Siege Gang Commando and casting it. Trigger, trigger, trigger my timbers. Dead as a fucking dodo. G. G. So yeah, Perforce is super fun and it's something I've been wanting to build for a little while and play on the channel. I think I might actually construct Perforce alongside Tatiova in paper as my two EDH decks that I will bring to GPs uh, later in the year and next year to get some EDH games in on the side. I hope you enjoyed this week's video and didn't get too triggered 
by all the triggers. Let me know if there are obvious ways in which I can improve this list. Let me know if I'm wrong and who your favourite god from Theros Block or even Amonkhet actually is. Leave a comment below with that information because it helps my engagement and actually generally I do want to hear from people. Or if you have nothing to say, simply type fuck off John as that will suffice and hopefully keep him from winning any one ticket EDH games on the channel anytime soon. I hope you've been pleasant Kenobi. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and smash that bell button because it's directly linked to my prostate and helps to milk me like a piece of cattle. Get your milk here. Ta-ta for now, boys and girls. Ta-ta for now.